Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and today we are going to cover a topic that is not talked about too often, it's optimization. And here we're going to talk about what to do if your game runs poorly, what to do if your game size is too big and how to quickly detect the bad apples in your game. So, and again, the obligatory plug for my website, Business Inquiries, below, like and subscribe. Here's my Patreon as well and let's go. First and foremost, we are going to improve your editor performance. This might be a video on its own, but let's tackle it really quick in the beginning here. Usually the editor tries to get as close to 120 frames as possible. That is most often not really necessary and takes up a lot of resources. So go down here to your command console and put in T point max FPS and type in your desired frame rate for me it's most of the time 30 fps for creating stuff that is more than enough you for playing i go higher but for creating 30 fps in editor frame rates is more than enough for me it gives you so much more resources and a smoother experience now with this out of the way Sometimes you might have the issue that if you look into a certain direction, it is going well. But if you look into a specific part of your map, it is starting to stutter. So what do you want to do if you want to debug your scene really quickly? Most of the time, lighting is the problem. How do you know? Go here on lit optimization view modes. And here we have a lot of things that are going to make your life so much easier. Let's go to light complexity and you get a beautiful look on what is going on. You see that I placed three point lights in here that are completely useless. And you have a metrics down here that ranges from good to extremely bad. Luckily, we don't have an extremely bad in here, but you can see that there's so much we could actually do. I duplicated another light and now you see that we have a lot of overlap. And if I move this around, you see where the problem is coming from. Most of the time, it is because there's a lot of real-time light sources overlapping. You can change those light sources going from movable to stationary to static. And the difference is quite easy. Move movable is a real, real-time light that you can move around that is casting real-time shadows. Stationary, a baked light that cannot move around, but other objects are throwing dynamic shadows. Static light is a fully baked light. Once you set that in place, you hit the bake button, it's done and over. That is in the scene now. It's not throwing any additional shadow anymore. It is baked into the scene. Obviously, for performance purposes, you want to have most of the lights on static, but it's really a trade-off that you have to see what is necessary and what infringes on your creative vision too much. You can see if I take lights away, it's getting much, much better. And this is one way of quickly debugging your scene. Obviously, there are a lot of other things that you can that you can check out. And all of these are highly, highly useful when trying to figure out where the problems are from. You see all of those shaders are well optimized. This is most likely a glass shader. So glass is always going to be uh, not as optimized as it could be, but that's fine. If things are red or white in your optimization viewport, you might want to have a look at it and see if there's anything you can do to optimize those materials or those light settings, and then you're good to go. Most of the time, if you keep your lights in check and your shaders, an eye on your shaders, you should be good to go and already have freed up a lot of performance. One thing that is often overlooked are texture sizes. It's not just about the triangles, but sometimes it's about how many 4K textures you have in your scene. And is it really necessary to have these 4K textures in your scene? Again, there is an optimization view mode for this. And it's going to be here in the required texture resolution. You can see if I select something now, it tells me that I'm twice over the needed limit. Only if I go really next to the door that we are getting into an area where it's necessary to have this high of a resolution. I know that this has a 4K texture resolution, but it tells me that if I'm not looking basically inside the door, I'm not needing 4K at all. As right now it says that I'm twice over the recommended resolution that I have for this, for this door. But how do we actually change it? especially if you have a lot and I mean a lot of textures in here. You can go to your textures, go to settings and set columns for instance. Now you see that some of those textures have like 4k dimensions and you can sort 
in ascending or descending order. A lot of those are 4K textures and I'm pretty positive that I'm never going to use 4K textures. And even though I can set it up that it's not going to export with 4K textures, I can scale it down right now if I am sure about it because it will take up a lot of size on your hard drive and everything else. Going through all of those textures and being like, okay, and where is it? Maximum texture size is 2048 maybe. All right, let's apply. Now it's... Uh, now it's 2048 by 2048 and doing this for every single texture is tedious. So let's select, let's just select a bunch of them. Let's select all of them, all of them right here. Go right click, asset actions, edit selection property matrix. There you go. Now you can select all of them. Maximum texture size 248. It will think a little bit, but now it's done. And if you go to those textures, you see imported at 4K, displayed at 248 and max in game is 248 as well. And you can go even lower if you want to or have custom settings when importing them. But now your textures should be much more manageable and smaller when exporting. How, do you, how else do you see what takes up so much space on your project? Go to maps, select your map and then go on size map. This is a handy dandy overview about what takes up so much space in your map. You can sort it by disk size or by memory size. Usually disk size is the one that I worry about the most and now you can see what is actually necessary. Then it tells you where it is. You can look, you can look for it, browse to asset or edit from here and then see if there's any optimization that you wanna do. Something that I like to do is build levels in another project that I'm actually working on. If I say I add stuff to this project or to this level and I'm really just in, in the sketching phase or making, I'm not quite sure where everything goes. I have an Unreal Engine folder that is bloated with stuff that is imported and maybe I don't need the other maps but I still have them here and the project is getting bigger, bigger and bigger. I usually have a master project and like a build project. Let's say this is the build project and my master project and my master project is just this empty file over, over here, right? Where I want to eventually put my stuff into. To quickly transfer the level that I built that I'm happy with and all its dependency without any of the bloat, right click, asset action, migrate. Now it selects all the dependencies, every dependency. Oh, that's just saving the packages. Save, 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 save. Now it's it's selecting all of the dependencies that is needed. Nothing that is not needed, only something that is directly correlated. Reference viewer that is directly correlated to this level. I can click OK. And now I'm looking for this empty project right here. There you go. Content. This is my project. Content. I. Select this folder, it's migrating everything over there. It's done. That takes, that doesn't take a very long time. Let's open up our other project over here, this one. In content folder, you now have our windmills, maps, and the windmill demo. That's the map. That's everything. And you can, you can see, I didn't know this was there. And you can see that I only imported all of the stuff that I actually need and none of the bloatware that I have in the other project. It didn't, it didn't move the other folders. It didn't move all of the meshes that is essentially not necessary for what I wanted to do. It's just copying all of the stuff that is directly referenced in this level. You can easily reduce your project size this way. Getting rid of the bloatware. These are some quick optimization tips that I want to give you on your way, on your journey of learning Unreal Engine 5. If there is anything else I can support you with, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to plug all of my socials and websites again. Like and subscribe if you found this helpful and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.